Hello, my internet friends, which is what my daughter told me to start using from now on. So internet friends it is. So thank you, Tacey, for the recommendation. I don't know if she's watching now, but if she is, internet friends was what dad said. So my name is Aaron Stewart from the Little Black Couch, and I am so glad to have you with us today. We are going to have a little discussion on something that I know sounds completely boring, but it's actually super exciting, especially for an entrepreneur. This is economic theory that is really important to get to know in order to expand your business in the most responsible and effective way. So let's jump right into it. Here we go. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me again with the green screen and the logos like the NBA teams do. What do you think? I don't know. We're, we're giving it a go. Anyhow, let's bring in our good friend, Buddy the Couch, who is obviously the um, superstar of my entrepreneurial journey. He has been with me for a long time and he there is holding on to a banana and a coconut, which unbelievably, as you may have guessed now, fits right into our discussion today of the law of comparative advantage. So many of you who have taken Economics 101 understand this, or at least you understand that you should understand this and maybe you've forgotten what it all means, but it's actually really important to get this because um, there is a lot of us who, especially now in this day and age of entrepreneurship, you have many opportunities to um, essentially hand off a number of your day-to-day -day activities to organizations all over the world at this point, which is really quite fascinating to be alive in this sort of day and time when that's possible. When I started being an entrepreneur, it really wasn't simple to hand off and interact online. So, we had to either find somebody locally or hire somebody to help us who came into the office and help and actually helped us. We needed to have what we used to say, butts in seats in order to get our stuff done, but we don't need that anymore. Um, there's so much that is outsourced um, over in the offshore, all around the world, and even locally, um, you can have folks that, that you can work with people that, that never came in. We used to have um, one of my wife's sisters work for us and she was just literally, you know, a couple miles away and she never came into the office, didn't need to because of the internet and all that, we didn't need her to come in here. And, and, um, and, and even now to this day, we don't necessarily need people to be in the office with you. I, I do think that there's some benefit to it, um, but not always, not always. So the law of comparative advantage, and I want to kind of, uh, take this law of comparative advantage and sort of plug it into modern day entrepreneurship and why it should be an important part of your ongoing strategy of, of being an entrepreneur. Okay, so we talk a lot about, in, in this day and age, we talk a lot about not trading time for money, which has always been a true principle in economics, that you want to get to a point where your money's actually working for you or you're not trading time for money. Okay, so that's that's been fact for so much longer, really since entrepreneurs started. Entrepreneurs got going, that's, you never want to be caught in a place, and you're never going to become wealthy if you're trading time for money, right? Um, well, at least your money's not going to keep growing for you even when you are not working, right? So you have the greatest opportunity to become unbelievably and grossly wealthy if you are not trading time for money. Okay, so then within that, we have this idea then as online entrepreneurs that we just need to start outsourcing everything we possibly can and only keep the things that we're most passionate about. 
Okay, and, and that's a one way to be happy. At least that's, that's the concept. Um, there's quite a few flaws to that. Um, I, I do believe that making sure that you're doing what you're doing uh, is enjoyable, but it isn't necessarily going to be the thing that makes you the most money. And that's where the law of comparative advantage comes in. Okay, so we'll go back to again show Buddy the couch. He's got a banana and a coconut there. And the reason the banana and coconut are there is that that's always what we used in college when we discussed the law of comparative advantage. And the scenario was such that essentially two um, industrious people, to be completely um, politically correct, we used to say men, but we're not going to say that anymore because I don't, know, I don't care one way or the other. So two people are showing up on a little, they've been marooned on a, on a desert island um, and it is a, a, a rich in bananas and coconuts. And fortunately, uh, apparently, their DNA has adjusted to such. They've evolved to such where all they need to, to, um, to live is bananas and coconuts. That's all they need. So the vegetarians listening should be thrilled, right? Um, I personally would die on bananas and coconuts, but these two individuals on this particular marooned island have um, evolved to the point where bananas and coconuts are all they need, right? And the more the better, apparently. Okay, so these two individuals, not really friendly. Um, you know, they went through a horrible ordeal, but not really big friends. So they all sort of take positions on either end of the island and both of them go to work. There's really nothing else to do. So they just work all day long, either harvesting coconuts or bananas. And that's it. That's all they do. And well, you've got the person on the north end of the island who can bring in about 10, uh, about let's say 100 bananas a day. If he's out foraging the banana forest, he can bring in 100 bananas a day. Uh, and then he can bring in 20 coconuts if he splits his day 50 50 100 bananas and 20 coconuts where if the guy on the south end of the island where he is very rich in coconuts so if he works the full day and he's super proficient then he actually can bring in 50 coconuts for half a day's work and 60 bananas okay so we're looking at this kind of going okay so, wow, you've only got a hundred, you've got a, a guy on the north doing a hundred bananas and, and 20 coconuts, and you've got a guy in the south doing 80, did I say 80? I hope I said 80 coconuts. Did I say 80? I don't even remember, and I should have written it down. Let, let's do, but I'm going to say 80 now. He can do 80 coconuts, but he can only do 20 bananas in half a day. Well, you look at that and you say to yourself, well, it's obvious. These two should get together and work together. And if they work together, they can have 100 coconuts a day and split it 50-50 and they both get 50 coconuts and they can have 100 and what, 40? What did I, okay, now I forgot the bananas. 140 bananas and split that in half and have far more bananas split both ways and far more coconuts split both ways. And so they're made better off because bananas and coconuts are on this particular case equal. And we do a lot of Ceratus par Ceratus paribus conversations when it comes to uh, economics, meaning everything else being equal. So we're saying coconuts and bananas are worth exactly the same, but that is the law of comparative advantage. So you want to make sure that you're focusing in your business on what you're most effective at. The problem with it is it may not be what you like to do the most. So this idea that do what you're passionate, do what you're excited about, may not make you the most money. You may be way better at coconuts, gathering coconuts than you are at gathering bananas, but you love gathering bananas and you hate gathering coconuts. So then that comes in and, and influences this, this, very, this very simple law of comparative advantage can get pretty messy pretty quickly. So when you are looking around to hire and outsource your um, opportunities, it, it's a very good idea to make sure that you are looking at what they're proficient at, 
and what you're proficient at and make sure that you're focusing on the things that you're most proficient at. And if it's something that you don't like and just want to get rid of, great. Can you find something that you're passionate about and you're also proficient at doing it? Is it really something that only you can do? And that's what we have to look for as entrepreneurs is look for the activities that you enjoy doing that can only be done by, by you because then the law of comparative advantage doesn't matter. Um, that you've got a monopoly position because you're the only person that can get this done. Now that has a lot to do with um, becoming an attractive character, having a connection with your audience, and that's why as entrepreneurs online, we start, um, we really begin pushing individuals into developing a relationship with their clients and spending most of their time there and outsourcing everything else because that's the one thing that you cannot outsource to somebody else, that relationship, that connection. And so the law of comparative advantage means nothing when only you can provide that. Does that make sense? So when you look at your business, make sure that you are outsourcing the things that you're just not very good at first. Okay, so you can reserve your time for the things that you're better at. Okay, so the things that you're not very good at, outsource those things first, even if you love them. Okay. Even if you really have a good time doing them, those are the ones that have to be outsourced in order to be most efficient. Then look at the rest of everything and figure out what you're most proficient in or what you enjoy most out of those activities and start working on those things and then outsource the other things as your company grows. With the only caveat being when, it, when it's something that you cannot outsource, that you have to do yourself like being the face of a company, and having that relationship with your audience, that can't be outsourced. So hopefully you enjoy doing that. And if you don't, find somebody in your organization that can make that connection with your customers and does enjoy doing it. That's a good way to be efficient at doing that. And then you can worry about something else that you're better at, that you enjoy doing. So hopefully that's helpful to all of my friends who are going to Denver for our little conference. I can't wait to see you there. For everybody else, we will miss you. And to all those who have no idea what I'm talking about, so be it. So, hey, yay. Let me bring Lance in. Hey, Lance, happy Monday to you too, bud. Just wrapping this baby up. Um, I don't believe that, um, oh, it looks like my son is going to participate in Meat Monday today, which he does with his friends. They get together and make a bunch of meat and then they eat it. That's Meat Monday from my boy. So anyway, thanks for joining me today. That is the law of comparative advantage. Please take advantage of it in your own business. It's important. Outsource the stuff that you're not very good at. Keep the stuff that you are very good at. Hopefully that stuff's stuff that you enjoy doing and make sure that you hold on to the stuff that only you can do. That is a great formula to a very good business in entrepreneurship. Okay. Till tomorrow, do good and be well. Aaron Stewart from the Little Black Couch. Thanks.